find the class boundaries for the frequency table for hip to waist ratios for centerfold models. So what we're going to be doing here is trying to produce this list of class boundaries. Remember that the class boundaries are basically a new set of class limits that don't have gaps between them. So when this one ends at 55 and then starts up at 56, there's a gap between those two classes. The class boundaries don't have those gaps, and we need to do that so we can create our histograms later on. So the way we're going to do this is very simple. We're going to subtract these two numbers here on the diagonal. That's the upper class limit of the first class from the lower class limit of the second class. We're going to subtract them and we're going to divide the difference in half. Whatever we find the difference to be, we'll divide it in half and then we'll subtract that value from all the lower class limits and we'll add it to all the upper class limits and that will produce our class boundaries. So I've created a list of steps. I'm going to put them up so we can copy them down and then from there we'll begin to perform the procedure. Okay, so here are the steps that we're going to use to find these boundaries. We're going to subtract that upper class limit of the first class from the lower class limit of the second class. And then as I mentioned before, we're going to divide the number we find in half. And then when we're done, we're going to subtract that number from the first lower class limit to find the first class boundary. And we'll add the result from that same calculation in step two to each upper class limit to find the rest of the upper class boundaries. All right, so let's begin to do this now. Okay, so now let's perform the work. Basically what we're going to do first is to accomplish the first step, which is to subtract the upper class limit of the first class from the lower class limit of the second class. That means we're going to take these two values here. That's the upper class limit of the first class, and we're going to subtract it from the lower class limit of the second class. And when we do that subtraction, we're going to get the difference 0.56 minus 0.55, which ends up giving us 0 0.01. Okay, so that's our difference. Now step two is going to be to divide that number we just found in half. So we're going to take that value, we're going to divide it in half. So 0 0.01 divided by 2. And when we're done with that, we're going to get the answer 0 0.005. Alright, so now we have half of this value, right? So half of 0.01 is 0 0.005. Now in step three, we're going to subtract the result from the first lower class limit to find the first class boundary. So what we mean by that is we're going to take this number here, this 0.52, and we're going to subtract off this 0 0.005. So we're going to say 0 0.520 minus 0 0.005. And when we're done with that, we're going to end up getting the answer 0.515. 0.515. Okay, so that's the result that we get for the first class boundary. So that's this value here, 0 0.515. And that's going to go over to the upper class boundary. Now the way we're going to get the upper class boundary is to add this number that we found, this 0 0.005, to each of these upper class boundaries. So that's going to give us a list of all the upper class boundaries. So if I take the 0.55 and I add 0 0.005 to it, I'll get the answer 0 0.555. And then I repeat down the line. So basically it's all of these numbers with a 0.5 behind them. So 0 0.595, 0 0.635, 0 0.675, 0 0.715. 0 0.755 and lastly 0 0.795. Now you may be wondering where are the rest of these? Well you can either continue, remember how we got the first one here, we subtracted this 0 0.005 value from each of the lower class limits. We could do it that way. In other words we can say 0.56 minus 0 0.05 but then you're going to get 0 0.555. And if you look at that it's the same number on the diagonal. So what we're saying is that basically it begins to repeat. All of these values end up being over here essentially. So we'll have 0 0.595 and 0 0.635. So again on the diagonal they're the same. And then 0 0.675 and then lastly 0 0.715 and 0 0.755. Alright, and those are your class boundaries. Now what you can see is we've created a new set of classes essentially, but these classes don't have gaps. In other words, where this class ends, this next class begins. And that's the whole idea of the boundaries.
to remove the spaces or gaps between the classes.